Welcome to the weekly press briefing of the Kosovo Specialist Chambers, where we aim to provide you with an update on the latest developments at the court and the opportunity to ask questions. Today's briefing covers developments in the proceedings since the last briefing on the 25th of July, including decisions taken during the judicial recess, which finished on the 16th of August. During the recess period, the court remained functional and work continued across all sections of the Kosovo Specialist Chambers. In the Salih Mustafa case, the Supreme Court panel granted, in part, Mr. Mustafa's request for protection of legality on the 29th of July and annulled the appeal judgment as it relates to Mr. Mustafa's sentence of 22 years of imprisonment. The Supreme Court panel returned the judgment back to the appeals panel to consider Mr. Mustafa's sentence in light of the reasoning set out in the decision of the Supreme Court panel. On the 31st of July, KSC President Ekaterina Trendefilova assigned a Court of Appeals panel for a new determination of Mr. Mustafa's sentence in accordance with the decision on his request for protection of legality. The appeals panel consists of judges Michelle Picard, Kai Ambos, and Nina Jorgensen. Persons convicted at trial have the right to appeal judgments and to seek extraordinary legal protections under certain circumstances, as Mr. Mustafa did in this case. Hearings resumed this week in the trial of Hashim Thachi, Kadri Vaseli, Recep Salimi, and Jakub Krasnici. On Monday and Tuesday, former U.S. Army officer Stephen Russell testified. On Tuesday afternoon, the 79th prosecution witness testified in court under protective measures. According to the summary which was read out in court, this witness joined the KLA around March 1998 and served at multiple locations, providing training to KLA soldiers and acting as a commander. The witness concluded their testimony yesterday. The next hearing in the Thatchi et al. trial is scheduled for Monday, the 26th of August at 9 a.m. In the same case, on the 21st of August, the trial panel granted in part a request by the prosecution to take judicial notice of a list of facts already decided upon by the court in the Sali Mustafa case, which the prosecution believes are also relevant facts to the Thatchi et al. case. Earlier this month, the trial panel also issued decisions related to witness testimonies, including granting a prosecution motion to admit three witness statements once these witnesses have appeared in court for cross-examination by the defense. On the 14th of August, the trial panel ordered the continued detention of Hashim Thachi and Kadri Vaseli in separate decisions finding that the risks that the accused will obstruct the progress of proceedings and commit further crimes against persons perceived as being opposed to the KLA, including witnesses who have provided or could provide evidence in the case, continue to exist. In regards to Mr. Thachi, the panel recalled its previous findings that the accused appears to have provided unprivileged visitors with information elicited during the testimony of protected witnesses. On the 21st of August, the trial panel granted a request by Kadri Vaseli for the early termination of Ben Emerson as his counsel. The judges referred to a letter from Mr. Vaseli requesting the withdrawal of counsel, quote, due to an irrevocable breakdown in the client counsel relationship. And they referred to a letter from Mr. Emerson notifying the registrar of his early withdrawal as counsel. The judges also considered a notification by the registrar that she had received a request from Mr. Vaselli to appoint Mr. Rodney Dixon as new lead counsel. The trial panel considered that Mr. Vaselli's request for early termination of counsel accords with his rights and adequately ensures his continuous and effective representation, having in mind that the defense team consists of 11 persons 
including two other counsel who have been involved in the case for some time, and considering the registrar's submissions that she is in a position to take steps to appoint Mr. Dixon as replacement counsel. In the, in the case of Sabit Yanuzi, Ismet Batyari, and Haji Shala, the pretrial judge ordered the continued detention of Ismet Batyari on the 26th of July. Finding that there continues to be a moderate risk that Mr. Batyari will flee and a risk that he may obstruct the progress of proceedings and or commit further crimes. The pretrial judge further decided that it is only through the communication monitoring framework at the specialist chambers detention facilities that these risks can be sufficiently mitigated. On the 5th of August, the pretrial judge ordered the continued detention of Sabit Yanusi, being mindful that, should he be released, Mr. Yanusi would have the motive, the means, and the opportunity to exert pressure on a witness to dissuade him from participating in the proceedings or to otherwise tamper with evidence. The pretrial judge further found that the risk that the accused may uh, obstruct the progress of proceedings and or commit further crimes continues to exist. The judge also found a moderate risk that Mr. Yanuzi may flee. In the same case, on the 12th of August, the pretrial judge denied preliminary motions made by the defense alleging defects in the indictment, in particular in relation to the charge of intimidation through a promise or gift or any other form of benefit as set out in the Kosovo Criminal Code. In the Pietrashala case, the appeals panel on the 24th of July granted in part a request by the defense to extend the deadline for the filing of notice of appeal against the trial judgment. The appeals panel denied a subsequent 8th of August request for further extension of this deadline. By way of background, the trial panel found Mr. Shala guilty of the war crimes of arbitrary detention, torture, and murder on the 16th of July and sentenced him to a prison sentence of 18 years with credit for time served. Under the rules, a party seeking to appeal the judgment and or the sentence has 30 days to file a notice of appeal, setting forth the reasons for the appeal. The appeals panel has now extended the deadline for filing this notice until the 2nd of September. The defense had asked for a longer extension until 30 days after the official Albanian translation of the trial judgment is available. But the appeals panel found that Mr. Shala failed to demonstrate good cause for a further extension because the determination and formulation of potential grounds of appeal fall within the responsibility of defense counsel who can work in English. The appeals panel also recalled that under the rules, the judges may authorize a variation of the grounds of appeal. And so the parties will have the opportunity if they so wish to request a variation of their grounds of appeal after having read the Albanian translation of the trial judgment, provided that they have shown good cause under the rules. In an update filed with the appeals panel earlier this month, the registrar informed the judges that an unrevised translation of the trial judgment is expected to be filed by the 6th of September, 2024. 